What's up, fight fans? Farah Hanoon here, aka UFC News Alerts, and I'm here to break down the massive fight coming up this weekend. UFC 229, Habib Nurmagomedov versus Conor McGregor. What I'm going to do here is kind of break the fight down, kind of talk about the keys to victory for each fighter and how I see this fight playing out. I don't usually give a prediction, so I won't do that. Uh, just kind of the keys to victory for each fighter. I'm also going to answer some of the questions that you guys sent through, so... In advance, I'm going to say thank you so much for those who did send. I'm going to try to get to as many as possible. Of course, this is a massive fight. Classic striker versus grappler fight. You, that is the way people see it. People, people ask me this question a lot. Do you really see it going down as quick knockout for Conor McGregor or a mauling by Habib Nurmagomedov? Now, of course, those are two very likely outcomes because when you look at Conor's resume, he has a lot of quick knockouts. It's what he does. And you look at Habib Nurmagomedov, he mauls people and he's done that. And when you look at his fights against Michael Johnson or Edson Barbosa, you get the feel that he possibly could have gotten them out of there earlier, but he just seems to enjoy, like really enjoy what he's doing, like beating on his opponent. And you get the sense that he gets a lot of submission attempts there, like when you look at the Michael Johnson fight and he finished it by Kimura, you get the sense that that Kimura was there earlier in the fight. But with Habib, because he was plagued with injuries early in his career and he finally started to get into a rhythm and get that octagon time, I got the feel that he really enjoys being in there. Like, he's grateful to be there. He's When the game plan's going well and he finally gets that takedown and he's beating beating up his opponent you get the feel that he's really excited to be in there. And, and that's why I feel like his fight's prolonged. I'm not saying necessarily that he could have finished those people earlier if if he did finish them, but I get the sense that he takes his time. He's a very calm and composed fighter, doesn't rush or panic for a finish. He really, he works. Like, Habib works. Connor is kind of the opposite effect. Like, Connor, he goes in there and he tries to get his opponent out of there really, really quickly. And when you look at this fight... Let's start with Habib Nurmagomedov. Now, of course, he's coming off of a win over Ally Quinta, a win where he received a lot of criticism for that, of course, because we saw, like, Ally Quinta is a very good fighter. He's a good boxer and he's a good wrestler. He, he's a well-rounded fighter. And when you look at Habib's grappling, you know for a fact that he's probably better than anybody else in the UFC. He he just has that that pressure, that strength. He's on another level. I mean, and that, a lot of people can agree with that. But when you look... At his fight with Ayakunta, you look at that matchup and you say, all right, Ayakunta can wrestle. He knows how to wrestle. It won't be so easy for Habib to get those takedowns. And when you watch back the fight with Habib and Ayakunta, you can see that the first takedown he landed, uh, it was kind of like a dive onto the ankle, and then he worked his way there. And the reason was because the way Ayakunta came out is he, Ayakunta is a boxer, right? So Habib knew that he couldn't pressure him the way he did Barbosa because when you look at Habib's fight versus Edson Barbosa, he was like right out there, like pressure, pressure, pressure. And the reason he did that, of course, was to take the kicks away from Edson Barbosa because Edson Barbosa is a lethal kicker. You don't want to get leg kicked or body kicked or head kicked or just kicked in general. So Habib wasn't really afraid of Barbosa's boxing, which is why he was able to go straight forward right into him and pressure him and kind of eat some kicks, but they weren't full extension from Barbosa because Habib was pressuring him against the cage and Barbosa wasn't able to get his full extension. And we know how fast Barbosa is with his kicks, right? So the reason why Habib did that is because he knew that he really had to close that gap. And he did that and he backed Barbosa against the cage and that's where he was able to land his takedowns and do his work. When you look at his fight against Iaquinta, Iaquinta is a boxer. So he knows not to pressure and rush Iaquinta like that because Iaquinta will be waiting for the counters. And, and Iaquinta was standing in that boxing stance and he was ready waiting for him. So that's the reason why Habib wasn't, didn't take the same approach of just moving straight forward at him. Now, of course, when you look at Conor McGregor, he's the boxer of all boxers in, the, in, in martial arts. I mean, he's not just a great boxer technically, but he's got that powerful left hand, he's got the precision, the accuracy, the timing, everything. And that's what makes it so interesting, right? Because we see Habib close the distance in very awkward and, and unorthodox ways. He doesn't have that standard 
um, double leg that, that an NCAA wrestler would have. That's not really his approach at times with the takedown. He kind of just needs to grab you. He doesn't care. Like, he, he grabbed Iaquinta's ankle. Like, he literally worked his way for a takedown from Iaquinta's ankle. I mean, that's all that Habib needs. And when you look at him fighting Conor McGregor, Conor is obviously going to press forward. That's what he does. Conor is going to look to press forward. With Habib, it's a matter of finding the right opportunity to shoot for that takedown. Of course, he can't go reckless against Conor McGregor, a guy that can counter him, because you know that that left counter is... Conor's waiting for it. But at the same time, Conor can't exactly disregard the fact that Habib can just duck under and take him down. Because we saw... And a lot of people don't like to use the Chad Mendes fight as an example because they say Conor like, had a blown ACL and... You know, he wasn't 100% going into that fight and whatnot, but we'll look at it because the fight happened and that's a kind of a fight that we have where, where Connor fought a wrestler. And in that fight, Connor was kind of very flowy and playful with his striking. He wasn't really worried about the takedown, which in my opinion is why he did get taken down. He was playful, he was loose, he was throwing the kicks. And I believe he learned a lot from that Chad Mendes fight because when you see him fighting Eddie Alvarez, who's also a strong wrestler, Connor didn't do that. He didn't just, he was very calculated with his strikes. And Connor is a master of range. When you look at Connor McGregor, he kind of measures. Yeah, when he fought at Featherweight, the guys were smaller. And, and the interesting thing with Habib is that he's taller and he's got a longer reach than a lot of Connor's previous opponents. But what Connor does very well, he's the master of range. So he will measure. He kind of has like his opponent in front of him. He'll bait them a lot. And we see Connor use a lot of kicks to set up his strikes. So Connor is not a kicker. Like He doesn't use his kicks to knock you out. That's not what he does. He uses his kicks to kind of measure range. And he tries to get a read at what you're going to do with your striking. And that's the way he's able to kind of bait you in. And that's when he counters with his left. It's all about that left. And it's easier said than done to be like, all right, all we have to do is worry about Conor McGregor's left. Because at the end of the day, he's not just swinging that left. He's timing it. And he's reading what his opponent is doing. And obviously, the Eddie Alvarez fight was a masterclass. Because Eddie Alvarez seemed frozen in there. Like, he he shot for kind of predictable takedowns. And Conor was able to defend them. You could feel that Eddie wasn't so confident in there and Connor was just timing him every single time. He was baiting Eddie in, making Eddie feel like... Because Connor does this thing where his hands are kind of like... And you think like his chin is right there to punch, like his face is right there. He's not one of those like tall boxers that stands like that, you know? Like he's... He kind of baits you in, like he'll switch stances and kind of bait you in. He'll stick his jab out to kind of measure the, the range and then he'll kind of throw that push kick down the middle that he does to the gut. He did a lot to Chad Mendes because he was constantly in attacking his body and, and obviously that attributed to Mendes getting tired. Yes, he didn't have a full training camp, but those body kicks also helped break Mendes down. And Connor uses that a lot, not just as an attack to the body, but kind of like digging his toes in. It's kind of like measuring range, and, and Connor's mastered that. And I think when... Habib, obviously, he's going to have to have a little bit of a different approach because Habib's really awkward with his striking. He's not a traditional boxer. He's not a traditional Muay Thai fighter. He kind of lunges in a lot, and he gets critiqued a lot for keeping his chin up as well. I mean, that's um, something that people saw in the Iquinta fight, but I feel with Habib, the reason why later on in the fight he was boxing Iquinta and standing right in front of him and kind of doing the um, Hamid Ali and, and all that is... Because he kind of sensed, like, at that point in the fight, Iquinta can't hurt me. Like, I, I took him down, I beat him up, he's tired, he's bloody, he's looking for that one shot, because, like, Iquinta needed that one shot to take him out at that point. And he was just confident. He He's not going to do that against Conor McGregor. He knows what he's dealing with in terms of Conor. And are people underestimating Conor's grappling? Sure. But at the end of the day, we're taught, like we're not going to compare the grappling of, of Habib and Connor. That's not the game we're playing. And we're not going to compare the stand-up of Habib and Connor either. The idea is that can Connor defend some of these takedowns? Sure, because if Habib doesn't set them up, Connor will be able to, to defend them because he's going to have to be quite careful with 
the way he shoots against a guy like Conor McGregor. He can't recklessly, like, with Barbosa, he kind of threw, like, a flying knee just to back Barbosa up against the cage, and then he grabs him. With Conor, he's going to have to be a lot more careful. And the thing is, the way Habib approaches this fight is obviously going to matter to if Conor's getting to him mentally. We saw in the press conference, Conor does his research. Um, no crowd, but he, he had to kind of give that extra in the press conference because there was no crowd to feed off of, no crazy Irish fans in the crowd to kind of rile, get him pumped up and rile Habib up. And I'm sure Habib would have had his fans as well, but, you know, the Irish get all crazy. And we will have a press conference now where, where the fans will be a part of it. So... That's what Connor does. That Connor kind of, he'll kind of. He's always crazy in the press conference. But the reason he does that is not only to make his opponent angry and throw away his game plan. Because I do feel that Habib is more level-headed than than the majority of the guys that Connor has fought in t- in the sense of not letting the the trash talk get to him. But when you hear Habib in interviews, he he talks about really wanting to punish Connor. But that's what he does. Like, people were reading that and going, oh, crap, like, he's going to mess up because he's, like, really intending, like, intending on really punishing Connor. Like, he's not just going to win the fight. Like, he's trying to hurt him. But that's what Habib does. He mauls people. He he gets them and he smashes them and he beats them up. In this fight, because Connor plays a lot of mind games, even when he's on bottom, I don't think he'll be able to because Habib kind of smashes you. He doesn't give you that opportunity to smile at him and tell him, like, Give me your best shot because Habib is so active on top. He's not one of those guys who's just lay and pray. Like, he'll beat you and he'll advance position and he'll swipe the legs and wrist control. And he's looking to hurt you. And if he does get Connor down early, he will do some damage. Mo- most likely going to do a lot of damage to Connor McGregor. And Connor's a tough guy. Like, he's been, I feel like his fights with Nate Diaz were very important. His fight with Chad Mendes the first time kind of showed us that he's not invincible. And then his fights with Diaz taught us a lot and taught Connor a lot. And we all know that cardio is going to be such a massive factor in this fight because Habib can go all day. Like he's, it's a grapple heavy approach by Habib. He's carrying his opponent. He's smashing him. He's pulling them across the octagon and he doesn't get tired. Like, he could go all day. Like, he'll do that for five rounds. He has no problem. So we know the cardio part is not going to be an issue for Habib. Connor, we've seen, have cardio issues. We saw it, obviously, in the Diaz fights. We saw it in the Floyd Mayweather, which maybe not a very relevant comparison because that's a boxing fight and uh, a boxing match, and it's not. there's no grappling involved and stuff. But should Habib take him down early and... and beat on him, it is going to take a lot out of Connor, not just physically, but mentally. And that's going to be the interesting part, is that if he does get taken down by Habib in the first round, and we know Habib takes his time, he's not necessarily going for the quick finish. I don't know if he's saying that in interviews just to kind of get us to believe something else. Is he going to change his attitude when he fights Connor and try to get him out there quick? We don't know. But in the majority of the fights that we've seen, Habib's never really been angry at his opponent, but he does kind of take his time and really be on his opponent. So if he does plan on going the same route with Conor McGregor and just take his time, we're, it's going to te- like show us a lot if, if Conor McGregor can recover, not just physically, not just cardio, but mentally after you take a beating like that. Because just imagine you as a mixed martial artist, you look at a guy like Ike Quinta, who's a very strong wrestler, has got good jiu-jitsu and... You get beaten up like that, like to get manhandled like that. It's got to mess with you mentally. And and I actually think Iquinta did a good job of getting back on his feet and being being tactical and getting back into the fight. I don't think he really messed with a guy like Iquinta. I didn't see Iquinta necessarily break, but the point was Habib was able to do it again and again and again and again. With Connor now, he's obviously going to approach us a little differently. He will press forward. It's what he does. And... Habib is going to be tentative to press forward, not what he did with Barbosa. So Habib is going to be a little hesitant. The idea is, how is Habib Nurmagomedov going to close that gap without getting clipped, without getting hurt by Conor McGregor? Now, for Conor, he's going to want to push forward, but at the same time, he's going to want to keep Habib off him. And that's where I feel like the kicks will play a factor because you think it's crazy if Conor throws any kicks, right? Like, because 
Habib can catch them and he can take him down. Like, it's a big mistake to do that against a wrestler. But what it will help Connor do is manage distance so that when he manages range, when Habib tries to close that gap to get the takedown, Connor is going to do all those reads and all those fakes and, and try to get Habib to lunge in and he's going to go right for the counter. Now, for Habib, I can imagine him going for quite unorthodox kind of takedowns where just trying to get a grab of Connor. And he's got to be patient. I mean, that's the key for Habib. And he normally is because he doesn't always get the takedown right away. We've seen in fights with Michael Johnson and with Ike Quinta where guys are defending his takedowns. But that doesn't throw Habib off. Like, he doesn't think, like, oh crap, what am I going to do now? He's very calm and he's very patient. And he'll try once, twice, three times. He doesn't care if it takes his 10. He, he had like, what, 21 takedowns against Abel Trujillo? Like, he doesn't care. Like, he'll go, he's relentless with it. But the idea is when you fight a guy like Conor McGregor, it's not only about being relentless, it's about being very, very cautious. Because if anybody's going to make him pay for a reckless entry, it's Conor McGregor. And both guys have a lot to worry about because Conor knows if he gets taken down that it's a problem because Habib is looking to hurt him and he's going to ground and pound him and he's going to pass his guard and he's going to try to look for submissions or or just kind of beat up on him in the first round. And it's going to take a, a lot. It's going to take a toll on him physically and mentally and cardio-wise. So we all know that Conor 100% does not want to get taken down. The good thing for Conor is that the fight starts standing. That's 100% the advantage that he has. And when the fight starts and they both go to the center of the cage... That's when Connor starts getting playful. That's when he starts like, right, you're in my world right now. It's a stand-up. And I'm just really, really interested to see the way Habib approaches the way the fight starts. Is he going to pressure forward? Because if he pressures forward recklessly, Connor is going to be waiting for him for with that counter. Uh, he's obviously going to have to try to close the distance but not do it in that forward pressure style. What he's going to try to do is wait for Connor to come first, and he's going to react to that. Now, you can't wait for Connor for too long because he'll make you pay. You know, you can't just sit there and, and watch Connor McGregor. And we've seen Habib a lot of times comfortably stand in front of his opponent and box with them for a good couple of minutes just so he can wait for the right opportunity. With Connor, you just have to be extra cautious. So I can imagine. Habib's going to have a little bit of a hard time trying to fight the right opportunity. And if Conor gives it to him, 100% he's going to capitalize on it. Whether it's an ankle or a leg or an arm, whatever it is, if he gets a grab hold of Conor, even if he has to stack him against the cage, work in the clinch, Habib is a patient guy. He's a strong guy. He's a strong grappler. He's a patient fighter. He doesn't care if he doesn't get a traditional quick takedown. And that's what's going to work for him in this fight. It's patience, patience, patience. He can't get frustrated. Now, a guy like Connor who trash talks you, I'm sure if Habib shoots for the first takedown and Connor defends it, Connor's probably going to talk trash. He's going to wave his finger. He's going to smile at him. And Connor's confidence is going to build up. Habib has to stay patient. And that's why when you look at this fight and, and just the excitement level, is, is the pressure going to get to Habib? Connor thrives off of this. Habib with a press conference coming up, Connor digging up like the past and, and, and talking about his manager and talking about his father and talking about Russian politics or just politics in general. He's really, really trying to get Habib riled up because he knows that if Habib gets over aggressive and pressures Connor, that's what he wants. He always wants that. That's what he wants with all fighters that he fights. And if you look at the stand up ability of Habib in comparison to the previous fighters that Connor's fought, He's probably weaker in that department. But then, obviously, in the grappling department, it's a whole nother level. So, man, this fight is just... I kind of feel that in in regards to what Connor wants to do, it's a lot more straightforward. With Habib, it's kind of that mystery of how is he going to approach getting the takedowns. Because we've seen him... He's a smart fighter. We've seen him have different approaches against different guys. And a kicker in Barbosa in a boxer in Iquinta. So there's different approaches that you got to go with when you're fighting a striking specialist. And and Connor is is a phenomenal striker, a phenomenal boxer. 
and he's got that power and that timing and that precision that Habib's never been hit with and that he's never really prepared for either. So definitely, I just feel the first minute of the fight is going to tell us a lot. And for Connor, I feel like it's a lot more straightforward what he wants to do, measure that range, measure that distance, and kind of read, gauge Habib in, kind of fake, stick that jab out, get Habib to come to him and counter him. With Habib, it's a little more more challenging just because the fight starts standing of how he can close that distance without doing it recklessly, making Connor make a mistake, grabbing a hold of him and taking him down. So, man, I, I can't wait. Because like, talking about that fight, I can imagine so many things. I can imagine a super fast Connor McGregor knockout. I can imagine Connor pressing forward, Habib grabbing him and slamming him and smashing him. I, I can imagine so many things, but one thing that isn't talked about a lot is actually that Connor's got solid takedown defense. I don't think he gets enough credit. He doesn't get the credit that he deserves in terms of his takedown ability and his grappling. Now, his grappling, when you look at Habib and his credentials, and, and not his credentials, but just what he's able to do in the grappling department, I don't think anything that Connor can do is, is going to be better than what Habib does, because that's not what we're looking at. Obviously, Connor is going to look to defend those takedowns. And Habib, if he goes for sloppy entries, don't be surprised if Connor defends a lot of those takedowns. And if Habib panics and, and falls into Connor's traps when he baits him in, he could get countered and he could get finished early. So it's all about Habib being very, very patient and opportunistic. And even if there's a lot of time where he's not engaging, it doesn't matter. Because for him, grab a hold of Connor, get the takedown. That's what it's all about. And he's just got to be patient about it because Connor will taunt him and he'll kind of tell him to stand in the center of the octagon. He'll do a lot of that. But I'll be very surprised if Habib comes out there very aggressive, uh, pushing forward, because that kind of gives Connor his best shot of landing a strike. So. Just a super, super intriguing matchup. Classic striker versus grappler, but it's so high level from both ends. In Connor striking and Habib's grappling, and it's it's an it's an incredible fight. I just can't wait. All right, I'm I'm gonna look at some of your questions now. We're gonna start off. How can Habib beat McGregor if McGregor can defend H Habib's takedowns? You know what? It, he is going to have a tough time, and I do feel like he, he has to land those takedowns. If he's not able to hold him down, I feel like a lot of clinch work would work for Habib. If he doesn't get those clean takedowns, he can still stack Connor against the cage, a bit of dirty boxing, make Connor work. That's the key for Habib in this fight, because we've seen Connor have cardio issues in the past fights. Doesn't necessarily mean he will. But that's just something that's obviously on the mind of Habib and, and AKA as a camp in general. So make Connor work. Make him carry his own weight. Stack him against the cage. A bit of dirty boxing. Drag him down. If Connor gets back up, just beat on him. Get him tired because all that, like Connor throwing a lot of those punches, it takes a lot out of him. And, and he, like his arms are going to become really, really heavy. And if, if Habib makes him work, Stacks him against the cage. If he's unable to land a clean takedown and do significant damage, make this fight ugly. Don't let Connor stand and look at you and, and measure distance. And don't let Connor control the pace of this fight. That's a massive mistake that a lot of people do. And I feel the biggest mistake that Eddie Alvarez did was he let Connor dictate the pace. When Alvarez was trying to dictate the pace in the beginning and he was getting countered and dropped, he kind of froze and kind of started trying to read what Connor's going to do. Never do that because Connor, don't let Connor work because Connor is very creative and he's a master at timing and he's got great precision. He's got great power and he'll bait you in. And he kind of gets you lost in the striking department where you feel like what you tried, what you envisioned in your head didn't work. So you, you don't know what you're going to do next. You can't take him down because he's defending it. And if you just stand there and look at Connor and be like, wait, what am I going to do? That's the biggest mistake. Because if you let Connor dictate the pace of this fight, it's an e easy win for him. Because he's long and he's dangerous and he's powerful. 
So the number one thing for Habib is if he's not able to land the takedown, do not let Conor McGregor dictate the pace. Make it ugly. Because Habib's unorthodox with his striking, so it kind of throws people off. We've seen him drop people. Uh, Tiago Tavares. Um, there's somebody else that's flying, like I can't think of right now, but he's got an awkward striking style. And obviously people don't fear it because you're looking at the grappling, you're looking at the takedown, you don't care about Habib striking, but... With Habib, he uses that striking a lot to kind of make you worry about one thing, getting punched in the face, and then using that to work for a takedown. So that's kind of what Habib does. It's not a matter of he's using that striking to knock you out. He's got his strategy of just trying to find that right opportunity to grab a limb and take you down. So number one thing for Habib, if he can't land a clean takedown, do not let Conor McGregor dictate the pace. Make it ugly, stack him against the cage. Dirty boxing, uh, make Connor work, make him tired, and then everything else will will open up for him. All right, next question. Everyone knows that if they stay standing, Connor will win, and if they go down, Habib will. But do you think the way Habib pressures fighters, do you think he will get clipped? That's kind of what I was talking about earlier. How obviously Habib would have to have a different approach. Uh, I mentioned the Barbosa and I point the thing where with Barbosa because he wasn't worried about the boxing and he was worried about the distance and the kicks, he was able to pressure and kind of walk through some of what Barbosa was trying to throw. With Ayaquinta, he had to be a lot careful because Ayaquinta had a very boxing stance and he knew what Ayaquinta was trying to do, kind of cap make him pay um, for a potential sloppy entry. So uh, I say look more at the Ayaquinta fight at the approach that Habib will take. And uh, Habib capitalizes, man. Like I, like he grabbed Iquinta's ankle. After he grabbed it, he worked his way up and was able to take him down. So there are unorthodox ways for Habib to land that takedown, and definitely can't pressure him the way he pressured Barbosa. Because with Connor, I feel like it's even that much more to look out for than than the Iquinta fight. All right, next question. Do you see the fight play out like Habib versus Barbosa? This is what I see. I mean, if he's able to, to get Connor to the ground, I feel like he'll be able to do a lot of damage, just like he's been able to do a lot of damage to a lot of people. But we're talking about getting him to the ground, like a clean takedown, not one of those. Because um, Connor, Connor can scramble, and, and Connor is athletic. Like He can scramble out of those, and I think he'll surprise people a bit. But if Habib gets him... With his back down, uh, man, the way he gr grabs the wrist, the way he advances position, I don't think Connor is going to have much to offer in that regard. So, yes, I could envision it going that way, but not necessarily. Do you think Habib is overrated? Personally, I think he has zero striking skills and his footwork is terrible. Connor should knock him out easily. Well, when you look at it on paper, obviously Connor's a superior striker in, in every facet. Just not just the power, precision, the speed, but uh, the accuracy, the diversity of strikes. So yeah, in that sense, Connor is a better striker, but it's a different approach. If Habib was fighting somebody in, in a pure stand-up fight, I feel he'd approach things differently. I feel Habib, a lot of his boxing and a lot of his stand-up has a lot to do with him trying to get the takedown. It's it's a different kind of striking. It's an awkward striking. I feel he that that Habib feels the need that he can't go out there and give a, a traditional stance. Like he's gotta like really pre press forward when it, when he did against Barbosa. Like he's gotta find a way to close the gap. So sometimes you find a lot of the rush kind of striking by Habib. Now obviously he can't do that against Conor McGregor, but. Uh, I feel that the reason he did that with Barbosa is obviously he's trying to close the distance. I don't think that that's how Habib would approach it if it was a pure stand-up fight, if you know what I mean. So he is a bit heavy on his on his feet. Um, I could imagine Conor trying to throw some leg kicks. Uh, wouldn't be entirely intelligent to throw a lot of kicks. Like, But then again, I said that Conor throws his kicks with meaning. Like He did that with Nate because Nate is like pure boxing stance, heavy on his feet. So Conor was chopping down at his legs. It was part of his strategy. Uh, but then again, he wasn't afraid to get taken down. With Habib, obviously, there's the fear of the takedown, but I do 
believe that Connor is going to be throwing a lot of kicks, um, whether it be probably not a spinning kick, but whether it be a leg kick or that push kick he does to the, to the stomach, to the gut, just to kind of get Habib away from him. So if, if Habib finds an opportunity to close the distance, Connor is going to be poking at him with his toes just to kind of back him off and then use that to, to measure that range so that when Habib comes, he can clip him. I hope that answers your question. <laughs> How does the energy of the arena play into the fight? Uh, that's a good question. I think it's going to be crazy. I mean, I do believe there will be a lot of Russians and a lot of people for Habib, and I can imagine during the fight we're going to hear a Habib chants and we're going to hear Connor chants. But man, like it's like it's going to be a war zone because you've got two of the most passionate fan bases. Like this isn't Connor fighting an American fighter where you're fighting in America and and you know what I mean, where you have a lot of the American fighters even supporting Connor. It's not a matter of that. With this, it's like real country pride. You've got Habib and, and Russia, and then you've got Connor in Ireland. And these these fans are crazy. They're willing to travel anywhere. So I do believe the, the energy of the arena is going to play a massive factor into the fight for both guys, I believe. You know, if Connor's on bottom getting smashed by Habib, he could get uplifted. That could pump Habib up. Um, and you see Habib a lot of times talk to his opponents. He talks to Dana. Like, he, he, he likes to play around as well. Both guys, once they get into the groove in that octagon, they like to play around. Like, they feel that comfortable. You really feel like both guys really enjoy their job. So that's what's going to make it a lot of fun. And, and that's why I feel like the energy of the crowd is going to play a factor. If Habib loses, will he break like Ronda? Um... I don't know. I, I, I don't think so. Um, I, you can't compare. Like, they're nothing like each other, Habib and Ronda, in terms of personality. And it's different because I feel like a lot of this hype and promotion is directed towards Connor as well. With Ronda, it was like 99 or even 100% her and basically nothing on her opponent. In this fight, it's not like the betting lines are Habib a minus 1,000 favorite and Connor. Like, you know what I mean? Like, so... In that sense, no, because both guys have a lot of hype. Um, a lot of promotions being put into his opponent, Connor, maybe more on Connor than Habib. So in that sense, no, I don't feel like it's one of those scenarios where all the pressure is on Habib, because there's a ton of pressure on Connor too. Do you think Habib could make this a one-sided fight? What I mean by one side is control the fight all five rounds. I mean, yeah, I could imagine if the first round goes perfectly for Habib and he manages to take Connor down and just smash him. We can see this affect Connor mentally and, and physically and just feel like, every, like his will is sucked out of him. We could see that. It depends on how much damage he absorbs from Habib. Not necessarily, because Connor, he's been through those wars. Maybe if you ask me this question, if they were fighting before the Diaz fights, then maybe I would have told you that I could see Connor maybe breaking from all that pressure. But now that the Connors had that experience in the two DS fights and now with Floyd Mayweather, and I'm sure he's worked a ton on his conditioning, I don't think he'll break as easily as people potentially see as a possibility. But then again, it depends on how much damage he takes. Like, it's just, it, that's a feeling thing. It depends, like, maybe physically, like, maybe mentally he's right there, but physically he may not be able to be 100% and throw his strikes um, with the power and the accuracy that he wants to. So could I see it as a, as a five-round beating? Sure, uh, I could, just because Habib is so good at what he does and inflicts so much damage, so possibly. But I don't know, with, with, with Connor, I, I don't see him just kind of succumbing to the pressure of, of Habib for all five rounds. If Habib doesn't finish the fight, I do believe that Connor will put up a fight from A to Z, because we've seen him kind of fade in the second DS fight and then come back to life again. So uh, I, may, maybe not, maybe not for five rounds entirely. Uh, I do believe he'll fight to the bell if Habib doesn't, were not to get him out of there quick. Right, the next one. Do you think Connor can keep on his feet against Habib? Well, the, these are kind of like the different, visiting the different scenarios that were. Um, we're looking at, uh, yes, I do. I can see this as Habib not being able to land the takedown and Connor finishing him early. I definitely can see that 
uh, scenario as well. So for sure. How can Connor stay away from the ground game of Habib? Uh, distance, 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 distance management. Uh, he, he, if anyone can do that, if anyone's good at that, it's him. Um, don't go, don't go be too flowy with, with his offense. Like he was in previous fights, like he was with Chad Mendez. Don't be too comfortable in there. He was a lot more calculated against Alvarez. And that's kind of the corner I expect us to see against Habib. Uh, just managing distance and range and, uh, uh, like I said, I do believe he's going to be throwing that kick a lot to kind of measure that range and wait for Habib to potentially get a little desperate for a takedown and make him pay. So uh, how can you stay away from the ground game of Habib? If Habib gets a hold of him, punish him. Like don't, uh, if not only, because of course if he grabs your leg, you're going to have to worry about your balance and kind of defending that takedown. But if he does grab a leg, punish him. Elbows, punches. Showing that if you're going to shoot on me, I'm going to make you pay. And kind of like the elbows hit him. So I'm, I'm sure Connor is looking to do all that. But stay away from Habib. Don't let Habib close that gap. What's the bigger liability? Connor's ground game or Habib's stand-up? It's a good question. I don't know because it's both like... I don't know. I I may be criticized for this response, but I do think maybe Habib stand up. Just because, and I say this because the fight starts standing. Like, we're not talking about a grappling match. Like, if that's what we're talking about, then... But we're talking about this is an MMA fight. Fight starts. They're both going to meet in the center of the octagon. And it's in Connor's world. When the fight starts, it's in Connor's world. And that's where I see kind of the biggest advantage in, in that regard if you're talking about... Who's a bigger liability? All right, the next one. How many takedowns Habib will land against Connor? I don't know. If the fight ends quickly, then maybe not much. Could be three, could be five, could be none. No clue. What do you think will happen if McGregor loses? Will he go back to boxing or take another fight with Diaz or even retire? If Connor loses, I see him fighting Diaz. Um, I just feel like he's not going to be content in his career if he does not complete that trilogy. Uh, not only because it's 1-1, because it's also such a massive fight. And I feel like he respects Diaz a lot. Not because of only the wars that they've had, but just he's a fighter. Like Diaz is a fighter, and, and he respects that. And they've earned each other's respect. Even if they talk crap about each other and blah, blah, blah. You see the excitement of, of Connor and even his coach, Don Cavanaugh, when they talk about those wars, whether it's the loss or the win. I'm sure you'd think they'd be more excited to talk about the win over Alvarez because it was a flawless performance. But man, they had that excitement when they talk about that fight with Diaz. It's just something that's going to stick with Conor for the rest of his career because it, he learned so much about himself and he really had to push in that fight. Like Nate Diaz made him push like no other fighter ever did. So, um, Or no, no other MMA fighter made him push. So that level of respect will always be there. And I... Honestly, feel especially that you know Habib and Connor is projected obviously to break that pay per view record, but after that, the biggest thing is probably that that trilogy. So Diaz win or lose, not Connor win. I believe if Connor wins, and and somebody is going to ask me that question because I remember looking through it, so I'll answer that when the time comes. But um, I don't think Connor goes back to boxing. If he loses, I don't think he retires. I see that Diaz trilogy being there because even if Diaz beats Poirier. And you ask Diaz, do you want to fight? And, and Connor loses to Habib. And you ask Diaz if you were to even get that opportunity by the USC, would you rather fight Habib or Connor? He's going to go where the money's at. So he'll pick Connor. Anyway, that's just my opinion. Connor wasn't able to deal with Chad Mendes' wrestling until he was gassed out since the fight was on short notice. How will he deal with Habib's wrestling and pace? Again, a lot of Connor fans will tell you that Connor had a uh, torn ACL, and that's the reason why. And another thing that I said previously was that Connor was very, very comfortable and playful with his striking when he fought Chad Mendes. He was loose and he was like straight line, like shooting right into Chad's double leg. You know what I mean? Like he, he'd get up, he's right there, and right into Chad's double leg. He's not going to do that with Habib, and he didn't do that with Eddie Alvarez. He learned his lesson in the Eddie Alvarez fight. and. If you watch the Eddie Alvarez fight again um, and, and you analyze Connor's stance and, and distance and his patience, most importantly, completely different fighter. So I feel like looking the Chad fight was such a long time ago and I just feel like it's a little 
Um, not irrelevant, but it's uh, you can't look at it that way. Connor's really evolved in all aspects as a fighter. Even in the striking department, uh, he's evolved. So uh, I don't think it's a perfect example to look at, uh, the Chad Mendes fight. He did get taken down multiple times. And of course, if Habib takes him down, he's going to do a lot more damage than, than Chad did to Connor. But I just don't see Connor being this loose in the striking. He's going to be a lot more patient and calculated and try to measure the distance and the range and try to get Habib, like bait him in with his jab and with his sticking his toes into his gut and, and just trying to be a master with it. I don't think he's going to be that loose and nonchalant about, about the striking exchanges. So um, I think it'll be completely different than the Chad Mendes fight. Who do you think will fight the winner of that fight? So the, who do I think is going to fight the winner of Habib and Connor? If Habib, I think Tony Ferguson, but if he beats Anthony Pettis, that's the funny thing, because if Pettis beats Tony Ferguson, like, we got a whole mix-up. Like, Pettis is suddenly in the mix. And, and remember this, like, Pettis is a, is a name. Yes, he's had his ups and downs, and he went from champion to Wheaties Box to, at a point, losing three in a row. But at the end of the day, his name holds value. And that's the reason why Tony Ferguson accepted this fight against Anthony. And that's the reason why Kevin Lee was going after that fight when uh, when everybody else was booked for Kevin Lee. Because at the end of the day, Anthony Pettis is a former champion. He's got a name. And Pettis comes to fight. People like to fight Pettis because he's exciting and he'll strike and he'll engage. Uh, he's not going to make it a boring fight by any means. So people love to fight Pettis because... They know it's an exciting fight. And second of all, they may potentially see a weakness depending on, on their strategy. If they're a wrestler, they're going to be like, right, we can take him down. But Pettis and Ferguson is going to be really interesting because the the good thing about a fighter like Anthony Pettis, he's dangerous. He's not just dangerous with striking. He's jiu-jitsu, like, so underrated. Like, this guy's a finisher. Anthony Pettis is a finisher. And if you make a mistake, if you get careless, he'll make you pay. And we've seen him submit guys like Charles Oliveira, who's we all know how phenomenal of a of a submission artist and how great his jiu-jitsu is. And he submitted, he played on the ground with Charles Oliveira. You don't do that. Uh, you don't mess around and, and, and grapple and, and go into different exchanges with a guy like Charles Oliveira. And he did, and he submitted him. So, And I remember he won his lightweight title by submitting a black belt in Benson Henderson off of his back. And he submitted a black belt in Gilbert Melendez kind of off of his back with the guillotine. So Pettis is dangerous. And I think his fight with Tony Ferguson is going to be fun. It's going to be wild. Um, I do believe Ferguson is going to be bigger physically. I, I imagine that Ferguson, because after they weigh in, Ferguson just, like, he, he looks like two weight classes bigger uh, after they weigh in. He makes weight, so much respect to him. So nothing, nothing in terms of that, criticizing him in that aspect. But uh, not to sway away from the topic, the question was, who do I think will fight the winner of that fight? If Anthony Pettis beats Tony Ferguson and gets Tony Ferguson out of the picture, I believe that H Habib will choose to fight the winner of Poirier and Diaz. Just what I feel. If Conor wins, I wouldn't be surprised if he ignored all that, even if Tony Ferguson won. And if Tony Ferguson wins and Nate Diaz wins, I could see a trilogy happening. And that'll be big. But I wouldn't be surprised if Conor went after Woodley. Conor, Conor is a wild man. He, he's got his different motivation. You got to really, really motivate him. I don't see Conor necessarily fighting Tony Ferguson um, just because, like, I feel the DS trilogy is always going to have that that um, that value, that excitement, because it's 1-1. If Poirier wins, I don't see him fighting Poirier. He's already beaten him. you got to really motivate Conor McGregor to get up and fight you. So even though Poirier, like, the advancements in the way he's turned his career around, like, even Conor McGregor gave him respect. It's incredible, and I love Poirier. I think he's a phenomenal fighter, but I just don't see Conor fighting him. I don't know why I don't even see him fighting Ferguson. I believe it's either Diaz trilogy or he goes after Woodley. I wouldn't be surprised if he went after Woodley. Another belt, more money, more accolades. Can Conor stop Habib's takedowns? All right, and if so, will he be able to survive if it goes past the third? All right, I'll answer the second part of the question because it's a little different. Uh, will he be able to survive if he goes, if it goes past the third? Uh, I do believe he will, he can. Uh, he'll probably be tired. Um, it depends on how much damage Habib has done. Are we talking about three rounds of Habib taking him down and beating him up badly? Or are we talking about three rounds of Habib working for a takedown, stacking him against the cage, frustrating him, but not inflicting that much damage? 
there's a massive difference. So if it goes past the third in a sense that Habib is landing the takedown and smashing him, then maybe it will be a little tough for, for Connor to really be able, cardio-wise, physically, and mentally, to get past the third without it being more of the same or without being finished. If it's three rounds of Connor having some success on the feet, but Habib ultimately edging out the rounds because he's making it a, um, a kind of like a dirtier fight by stacking him against the cage and clinching and stuff like that, then Connor's still going to have that hope that, right, I've got two more rounds to knock him out. So I really do believe it depends on how much damage Connor McGregor takes and how much he's able to avoid in those three rounds should Habib not finish him if he, if he were to have those success, that success. A lot of ands and ifs. Does Connor have the cardio if he goes through a round of Habib on top? Uh, I believe so. One round, yeah. I feel Connor can recover from, from a round if Habib doesn't finish him. Even if he does kind of get beaten up a little bit, I, I do believe he can he can go some more. I do. Do you think Habib's chin can handle a couple shots on his way to the takedown? That That's the question we're all answering. and I can't answer that question for you. Um, you know, Connor's convinced that Habib has a glass drawn. I think he's doing that as mind games because he wants Habib to lunge at him and be like, what do you think? I have a glass draw. I'll stand up with you and show you. So he, he this is all mind games and I'm sure Habib's aware of it. So when Connor says that Habib has a glass draw and we all look at that left that, that Michael Johnson hit Habib with, um, this is all just mind games from Connor because he wants Habib to advance and, and get reckless and stick his chin up kind of like he usually does so he can land that shot so that's just mind games from connor we'll find out we'll find out if he can handle that all right i think that is it yeah i got through a lot of them were quite similar which is why i did not answer every single one of them but thank you so much for all those who did send questions i appreciate it i hope i gave you the answers you were looking for of course, Habib Nurmagomedov versus Conor McGregor goes down this Saturday, live on pay-per-view, October 6th in Las Vegas. Uh, most anticipated fight in UFC history, biggest fight in UFC history. I agree. I, I just not only because of who Conor McGregor is and the superstar that he is, but Habib's undefeated. Not only because he's undefeated, but because of what he does to his opponents and how he's made like great fighters or good fighters, or top-ranked fighters like Ike Quint and Barbosa look, the way he was able to just destroy them and, and suck the life out of them and just make them feel like they can't do anything, make them feel helpless. His ability to do that, Connor's ability to make a lot of high-level strikers look novice compared to him, it just has all the... It's just such a fascinating fight. It can go any and every way. That's the beauty of this fight. It really is. It's... As straightforward as a Connor knockout, quick knockout, and a Habib, and a Habib mauling, it can also go another 10 different ways. Uh, just a super exciting matchup. One thing that I didn't touch up on before I conclude this is Connor's layoff. Uh, I'm surprised nobody asked me about that. Two-year layoff, will it play a factor? Ring rust? I don't think so. If, if anyone's as mentally strong... Uh, if anyone is mentally strong, it's Connor McGregor. I don't think ring rust will affect him. Uh, he did box Mayweather last year, so different kind of ring. Um, but I don't think ring rust will be a factor at all for Conor McGregor. He's super mentally strong. He's got a lot of confidence. He seems so motivated. We all know he's not here for the money. He's here because everybody's saying there's a guy holding a lightweight championship that you never lost, that you were stripped of, who's undefeated, who's destroying everybody, and he's going to destroy you too. And Conor McGregor's coming out there to show... I can beat this guy, and I can knock anybody out. I see a weakness in his game. He keeps his chin up. He's a sloppy striker. I'll make him pay. Habib's looking at Connor like, this guy can't grapple to save his life. I'll smash him just like I smash everybody else. It's, it's such a great fight. Russia versus Ireland. Man, that is just so much history. Uh, everything that went on before the fight with the bus incident, with uh, Habib confronting Artem with his team. Man, there's just so much. There's so much, like, kind of, like, hatred and, and passion and high-level skill and everything, man. Like, the whole world's talking about this fight. I've had so many people who know nothing about fighting hit me up. Uh, it's funny how you hear from certain people that you never hear from, and it's because of this fight. So, such an incredible fight. I can't wait for it. 
Hopefully I'll do one of these, like a live video or something after the fight to talk to you guys about the excitement. Because no matter what the outcome is, I feel like we're all just going to be amazed. So thank you so much for tuning into this. I hope to do this for more main events down the line. Maybe Poirier versus Diaz coming up. So thank you so much for tuning in and uh, enjoy the fight Saturday night.